Welcome to the City of Bakersfield Planning Commission meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern, and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 10 a.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, Chair Daniel Cater. Good evening. It is my pleasure to call to order the June 6, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Cater? Here. Commissioner Komen? Here. Commissioner Bell? Here. Commissioner Bowers? Here. Commissioner Lomas? Here. Commissioner Rudnick? Here. Commissioner Wade? Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, and thank you for attending tonight's Planning Commission meeting. This commission provides an opportunity for public participation in the development process throughout the city of Bakersfield. The Planning Commission considers a wide variety of projects, including subdivision maps, zone changes, general plan amendments, and much more. When applications are received, the city's planning division analyzes the request. Planning staff will present the facts about the project along with their recommendation to the planning commission who will approve the item or make a recommendation as appropriate. Our goal is to carefully consider each project and make a decision that will balance individual rights with public welfare and the general well-being of our community. We will now receive public statements. This time is reserved for anyone wishing to address the commission on any matter not on the public hearing portion of the agenda. If you are here on items 5A through 5I, this is not the time to speak. Does anyone in the audience wish to address the commission? If so, please step forward and state your name. Seeing no speakers, we will now move on to consent calendar non-public hearing items. These agenda items typically involve housekeeping or administrative matters that do not require a public hearing. Does any commissioner wish to remove a consent calendar non-public hearing item for separate consideration? If not, may I have a motion to adopt staff's recommendation on consent calendar non-public hearing items? I'll make a motion to accept uh, item 4A and 4B. Commissioner Coleman, may I have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Rudnick, please cast your vote. Motion passes. Takes a minute. All right, look at that. All right. We will now move on to consent calendar public hearing items. The next agenda section includes public hearing items that are considered routine or non controversial. These items have been conditioned are been reviewed by staff and are conditioned in accordance with the requirements of the, the municipal code. The planning director will read each of the items on consent calendar to ensure that the public has an understanding of all items to be considered. If you would like to speak on an item, please come forward after the items are read and ask that the item be removed for discussion. If no items are removed for, by a member of the public or a commissioner, the commission will vote on all items together in one motion without further comment. Mr. Coyle? Would you please read uh, items 5A through 5I on the agenda tonight? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the Planning Commission. Uh, project 5A is a general plan amendment zone change number 18-0366, which is a proposal on 0.66 acres located generally on the northwest corner of Cottonwood Road and East Plans Road, consisting of an amendment 
of the land use element designation from low medium density residential to general commercial and a change in zoning from limited multiple family dwelling to regional commercial. Project 5B, general plan amendment zone change number 18-0448, a proposal on 8.53 acres located on the southwest corner of the Renfro Road and Santa Fe Way intersection consisting of an amendment of the land use element designation from resource intensive agriculture to light industrial and a change in zoning from agriculture to light manufacturing. Project 5C, general plan amendment zone change number 18-0457, a proposal on 12.97 acres located at the southeast corner of Hosking Avenue and South H Street, consisting of an amendment of the land use element designation from low density residential to general commercial and a change in zoning from one family dwelling to regional commercial slash planned commercial development. Project 5D is planned development review number 18-0456 which is a request to allow development of a commercial center in the C2 PCD district located at the southeast corner of Hosking Avenue and South H Street. Uh, this is pending approval of the related general plan amendment and zone change 18-0457. Staff recommends continuance of this project to the June 20 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Project 5E, General Plan Amendment Zone Change Number 19-0035, a proposal on 10.1 acres located on the northeast corner of Hosking Avenue and Weibel Road, consisting of an amendment of the land use element designation from low medium density residential to general commercial and a change in zoning from residential suburban and one family dwelling to neighborhood commercial. Project 5F is general plan amendment zone change number 19-0039, a proposal on 0.64 acres located at 1720 Plans Road consisting of an amendment of the land use element land use designation from high density residential to general commercial and a change in zoning from residential suburban, high density multiple family dwelling and regional commercial and multiple family dwelling to regional commercial only. Project 5G, general plan amendment zone change number 19-0134 a proposal on 1.72 acres at the existing Wheel Park located at the southwest corner of James and Q Streets, consisting of an amendment of the land use element designation from parks and recreation to service industrial and a change in zone classification from open space to general manufacturing. Project 5H is Plan Development Review number 19-0141, which is a request to allow development of an 81 multiple family dwelling units in the multiple family dwelling planned unit development district located at 3345 Bernard Street. And finally, Project 5A is an extension of time for planned commercial development number 19-0206, which is a request for an extension of one year to commence construction of a previously approved plan to allow a 37,000 square foot, 59 bed, skilled nursing facility in a planned commercial development zone at 3450 Bernard Street. This concludes the reading of this evening's agenda. Thank you, Mr. Coyle. At this time, I will open all of the consent calendar public hearing items. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak on a consent calendar public hearing item? Again, this is, oh, please, uh, this is, step forward and state your name. 
Again, this is not the time to take testimony. Just request that the item be moved to the public hearing portion of the agenda. I would request that agenda item 5B be moved to the public hearing portion. Thank you. Can I have your name as well? Rebecca Davis. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jack Stewart, and I request uh, that uh, extension of time number 19-0206 receive comments. Item 5I, correct? Yes. Beg your pardon? Oh, it's item 5I? Yes, the last one. Thank you. Yes. Uh, it was... Mr. Chairman, Stan Shires. I may misunderstood. Is uh, H also on this consent agenda? It is on the consent agenda. I'd like to have that removed. Thank you. I would like to discuss the plan development for number 19-0141. For H as well? Yes, thank you. Oh, can I get your name as well? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Margie Castillo. Thank you. Hello. Um, item 5A. 5A. May I have your name as well? Gilbert Wong. Thank you. This is open for discussion? Yeah, and we'll move it to the, that portion of the agenda. Thank you. Uh, we don't want to take it off consent. Oh, okay. Thank you. That was 5A, right? Back on consent, yep. Hi, Hello. Um, Wanda Brown. Um, 5E, is that 19-0035? Can you take it off for discussion? Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, that was another one that's being sent back to staff because there's an issue with the... Uh, with the uh, application not being properly endorsed. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so we will uh, provide a time for public comments, but item 5E is being continued to the next meeting, so it'll be brought up again. Well, not necessarily the next meeting, but the what? next GPA cycle. So oh, it'll be back cycle. in August. Oh, it's back in August. So are we going to have dialogue about it now, or are we going to set up the next, for the next meeting? The applicant is not here, but if, if you would still like to make comments, we can do that. But if you'd rather just come back in August, you'll get noticed again. That would probably be better, but it's up to you. I mean, August better for you? Okay. Okay, then we'll keep, we'll continue that item. Victoria Martinez, and I'm requesting 5G for further discussion. Thank you. Yep. So you have item. Is there any other members of the audience wishing to move an item for discussion? Seeing no, uh, no other at this time, I will close. Uh, oh, is there any commissioner wishing to remove a consent calendar uh, public hearing item? Everyone's okay. All right. So at this time, the public hearing on consent calendar items 5A, 5C, 5D, 5E, and 5F are now closed with items B, G, H, and I moving to the public hearing portion of the agenda. Um, um, may I get a, a motion to adopt staff's recommendation on consent calendars 5A, 5C, 5D, E, and F with item E being continued to 
the next general plan cycle? Just being referred back to staff. Uh, being referred back to staff yeah. for, for re noticing it. Re noticing, yes. I make that motion. Thank you. Do you want me to repeat Can those you say numbers? it again? <laughs> so we have A, C, D and E are referred back to staff. F is, go, is in consent. And I think that's it, right? Did I miss one? No, no. We're, is I, we're approving items 5A, 5C, 5, F. 5D, and 5 well, F. Yeah, and we're approving and e that. And is the, being referred right. back to staff. Thank you. I make that referral, that uh, motion. Thank you, Commissioner Bell. May I have a second? I'll second it. Commissioner Bauer. Commissioner, who, who second? Commissioner oh. Bowers. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, please cast your vote. Oh, please cast your vote again. While that's going on, I just want to clarify for the record that 5D was continued to June 20th as well, not approved. So. Was Commissioner Bell's original? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was trying to catch up with all these last minute changes too. Going through. Let's, yeah. And also, before we get to the public hearing portion, I've received requests from staff to pull 5G first so that way they can respond to any questions and address that one. Okay. Well, uh, uh, that's fine. Yeah, item 5G will be heard first. Have we? Uh, okay. 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 Yeah, motion passes. Okay. It is now time to hear the consent calendar public hearing items removed from that portion of the agenda, which are items 5B, 5G, 5H, 5I. We have a request for staff that item 5G be discussed first, so we'll begin with that. Um, before we begin, though, I want to explain how each of the hearings will be conducted. Staff will first give a report, then those in favor of the project will be allowed to speak. Those in opposition to the project will, will be able to speak after all those in favor have spoken. Each side will be given a five minute total time to provide rebuttal, rebuttal comments. Individuals may speak, may ask questions during their statements, but the questions will not be answered until the public hearing on that item is closed. Written comments may also be provided to the clerk who will provide copies to the commission. Please be respectful of others participating in the hearing by not repeating the remarks of previous speakers and presenting any new comments in a concise and clear way. Mr. Coyle, will you please provide us staff report on item 5G? G. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. Project 5G is general plan amendment and zone change 19-0134. The city of Bakersfield is requesting this general plan and zone change amendment the project is located on 1.72 acres at 2601 Q Street, Bakersfield, California, 93301, which is the current location of Wheel Park. On November 1, 2018, the Bakersfield City Council adopted Resolution Number 143-18, declaring a shelter crisis within the city of Bakersfield. 
on November 6, 2018, voters within the city of Bakersfield approved Measure N, which provided 13 specific priorities, including addressing homelessness. A proposal was prepared which included the construction of low barrier emergency housing. Uh, Assistant City Manager Jackie Kitchen was here to answer questions. Oh, hiding, hiding in the back. Assistant City Manager Kitchen is available this evening to answer any questions related to this project. Wheel Park appears to be a suitable location it's already a city-owned facility. It's an underutilized park, and all amenities have been removed in the past due to vandalism. It's geographically separated from other sensitive land uses, and it is within proximity of other service providers. Separate from this project, city staff are working to review alternative park sites to better serve the community. The general plan amendment request would change the land use designation from parks and recreation to service industrial on 1.72 acres, and the zone change would change the zoning district from open space to general manufacturing on 1.72 acres. Staff has concluded that the project is consistent with city council resolution number 143-18 surrounding development the general plan, and the zoning ordinance. Staff recommends, one, adopting a notice of exemption, and two, approving the general plan amendment and zone change. This concludes our staff report. Thank you, Mr. Coyle. The public hearing on this item is open. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the project? If so, please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Um, they, <laughs> good evening, Planning Commissioners. Uh, it's good to be back before you. I haven't seen you in a little while, so hello. Uh, as Mr. Coyle indicated, I'm here to answer any questions about the specifics of this project. Uh, as he laid out, this is a part of the measure in proposal uh, that has been presented to the City Council and weighed in by them. Uh, kind of stepping back, big picture, we know that there is a significant homeless uh, issue within the city of Bakersfield. As a, and as a part of the measure and proposal, uh, we have created uh, several options to help address homelessness. The first is the creation of several rapid response teams within several city departments, uh, within uh, the Parks and Recreation Department, and Di Ms. Diane Hoover is here, the Recreation and Parks Director as well to answer any questions. Uh, and then there's also a rapid response team being proposed within the Code Enforcement Unit of the Development Services Division. And what that rapid response team will do is respond to uh, complaints from the public and from business owners related to homelessness specifically. The third part of that is having a facility uh, that offers a temporary emergency shelter uh, we have the Bakersfield Homeless Center within our community, the Mission at Kern County, and several other service providers. However, there simply is not enough room available. There are not enough beds uh, to serve our homeless community. And so as a part of the measure and proposal, funding is being allocated to construct a temporary emergency shelter facility. Uh, the reason that city staff is looking at Wheel Park is we've already started doing quite a bit of research We've talked to other cities, such as San Diego, Los Angeles, Sacramento, and more, uh, to find out what they're doing. Uh, and they're doing something similar. They're building emergency shelter facilities. And they've learned a lot of lessons on the do's and don'ts. Uh, so we are talking with them about where is a good place to build this. Uh, how does it be, op how is it, how, what are the best practices in terms of operation, et cetera. Uh, and by initiating the zone change and general plan amendment at Wheel Park, we're trying to get out ahead of the curve a little bit and have a piece of property that's available if we're able to move this project forward. 
Uh, this isn't a guarantee. This is just us trying to plan ahead and think of a site. Uh, Wheel Park was ultimately selected after we did an exhaustive search of available property throughout the city. We engaged several commercial realtors and others looking for property. This is obviously a very sensitive and difficult type of use to site within our community, but it's something that we need to do. Uh, and so Wheel Park seems like a good fit because it's not really serving as a park. And Diane can speak more to that. Um, but over time, all of the park-like amenities, including picnic facilities, et cetera, have had to be removed due to vandalism, et cetera. Uh, so essentially, it's grass right now that the city maintains. And over time, with the installation of Golden State, uh, the proximity to the railroad, I think this aerial tells the picture pretty well. Uh, you can see that it's pretty geographically isolated from the neighborhood to the north. Uh, it's not really serving that neighborhood to begin with. So separately, as a kind of a, another component, we were already looking at options to create a new park that better serves that neighborhood to the north. Uh, and Diane and I are working together on that, uh, and as well as with Council Member Gonzalez, who's asked us to look into that. Uh, so there's kind of two moving parts here. Uh, but with that, we think that this might be a good fit uh, as Mr. Coyle said, it also has good walking proximity to other service providers in the area, uh, and we're trying to do the best we can to find a site that uh, is impactful but doesn't impact uh, surrounding sensitive users, and we think this site meets that criteria. Uh, and with that, Diane and I are both here if there's any other questions. Thank you. I have one question. Oh. Uh, um, what was that? Yeah, well, the, uh, so if you're here in opposition, you'll get a chance to speak, and then uh, we can ask questions of staff. Uh, at a, there's a time of, that's a pro more appropriate for that. Yeah, that's okay. Um, is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor before we move to opposition for the project? Okay, seeing no other speakers in favor, uh, is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the project? If so, uh, please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. My name is Margie Castillo, and my only question or concern would be is if it's already, if that was a park that was there and was already vandalized and we have that problem, what makes us think that us putting up new housing projects that's not going to get vandalized as well and just being a waste of our taxpayer money? Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Stan Shires. I'm not totally against this, uh, but just a little history. If this is the area I'm thinking of, there was a young boy that was murdered called Joshua. And the land was donated for this park, and the community held fundraisers to raise money to give to the city to maintain this park, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, just to clarify, um, is Joshua's park Located a few blocks east, Hoover. Yes, that's correct. Joshua Park is in a different location. I'm Diane Hoover. I'm the director of Recreation and Parks. Thank and you. yes, uh, Joshua Park is located in a different location. This is Wild, Wild Park. Wild Park was cut off when the exit uh, area was built off of Golden State. Uh, it is bordered, as Miss um, Kitchen said, bordered by the railroad, Q Street, a recycling center and Golden State entrance. And the reason we have removed uh, several things is that over time, uh, the, the picnic tables and the shelter that was there uh, did become vandalized by the homeless that uh, hang out there. Also, the recycling center caught on fire and burned some trees and burned a couple of our picnic tables and trash enclosures. So we uh, just removed those as well. I hope that helps. Thank you. Um, any other speakers in opposition to the project? Yes. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I stand corrected. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other members of the audience wishing to speak in opposition? Victoria Martinez again. 
Um, I just um, am wondering if there is other um, areas that have been picked out for this bridge housing, I believe we're talking about. Um, you're taking away a park, whether or not it's used. Um, I do not know the demographics. I've been making several calls and I've gotten a lot of nowhere places, so I'm still kind of doing some research, so maybe I can have some help with that. Um, and I, it is in a low-income black and brown community, and no representation, it looks like, which is the norm. And just wondering if it's going to be spread out through the whole city, because the homeless is everywhere also. But taking something away like that, I, I just, that's my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing no other speakers, uh, does any commissioner have a question for the public or staff on this item? If, remember, this is not a time to express an opinion on the matter, just ask questions. Commissioner Rudnick. Uh, I guess it's for Jackie. My question would be, is there, is there funding available to, once the zoning is, changes are approved, is there funding available to actually improve it? Or is it many years down the road? Uh, Commissioner Rudnick through the chair, yes. As a part of the measure and proposal that's in front of the city council now, there's $4 million allocated. Uh, for the capital costs to improve this. And then the city is also seeking to hire a third party contractor to operate the facility. Uh, as we know, the city has no expertise in that field, but we do have many partners in our community that do. Uh, so we're working with them to reach uh, a term for that and we will be putting out a proposal for uh, operational consideration. How many beds do they think will be there? <coughs> uh, well, when we initially started this uh, research, we were looking at 100 beds, uh, but just over the last few days, I've sp spoken with more service providers, including flood ministry and others, uh, and gotten a better indication of what our point in time count reflected, uh, et cetera, and we have he heard that as many as 200 beds may be wow. needed. Uh, so we're looking at different options and ways to construct that. Uh, this is a, obviously a large capital project, uh, something that we need to have in place yesterday, but at the same time, we know that it needs to be done correctly and thoughtfully. Uh, so it could be in the range of one to 200 beds. Good, thank you. Sure. Commissioner Coleman. Thank you. This is also for Ms. Kitchen. Um, you answered the two, two of my questions that were the uh, same as Mr. Rudnick's, but uh, uh, can you talk a little bit more about how you define low barrier housing and how that differentiates, differentiates itself from the housing that we already have with the uh, Bakersfield Mission and the Bakersfield mm -hmm. Homeless Center, please? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we've learned in our research is that we have a shortage of beds, but we also have a shortage of low barrier beds. Uh, there are a lot of people in the homeless community that have pets or they have possessions or they have a family or a spouse. Uh, and typically people with those kind of traits uh, don't have access to the type of facilities and beds that are currently available. Uh, so this facility wouldn't have those kinds of restrictions. Uh, and again, it would be a short term facility uh, there would be a limit on the stay, and the idea is that this is not a permanent residence. This is somewhere where uh, individuals could be immediately taken off the street and connected with services. Uh, there would be case management on site. Uh, there would be, we would work together with housing providers to ensure that they are immediately aligned with housing. Uh, this is intended to be an interim step uh, and to address the emergency essentially that's before us in Bakersfield and throughout the entire state. Thank you. Commissioner Bell. Again, uh, Ms. Kitchen, good to see you. 
Um, Maybe you should uh, stay at the Yeah, <laughs> just stay. There's a few more commissioners. <laughs> so uh, does this, is this an addition to the resource center that's being planned and the drop-in center that mental health, police departments, uh, uh, a flood, other ministries mm -hmm. are going to be using? This is a city plan project beyond that, correct? This is a city capital project, capital yes. Project. In addition to that, uh, we're also working with Kern County Behavioral Health. Uh, they're also br bringing forward several navigation centers, day centers. This is really all part of a collaborative effort to address this issue. It's not a one-size-fits-all. Right. Uh, we know there's not a magic single way to fix the issue or address the issue, uh, but it's part of the larger collaboration. And in the same token, I know... Uh, with behavioral health, they're using the police department flood, other uh, groups to determine those in greatest need. Mm -hmm. Will the same process be applicable to this property as well? Will it be just somewhere where they drop in or is this one where the police department and other resources can help in getting those people help and uh, I, I would so. say that that's still being defined okay. as a part of the research, but the intention is that it's not just for the city. It wouldn't just be for code enforcement or others to bring people to. We would envision this as being more of a collaborative space okay. uh, that could be used by multiple agencies and service providers. Thank you. Commissioner Wade. I'll address this to you also. Okay. <laughs> um, one of the previous speakers uh, asked a question that implied it was her concern that even though the homeless problem is citywide, mm -hmm. that these sorts of facilities would only be located in lower income parts of town. Can you address that concern? Uh, well, as I mentioned earlier, we looked for sites. We worked with a commercial realtor and there just aren't a lot that uh, were available, for one, that met the need. And then, of course, cost is an issue. Uh, one of the benefits of this site is it's already a city-owned property, uh, so there is an, an additional cost associated with that. Uh, but that being said, I'm hearing a lot of feedback from uh, the service providers and more. <coughs> this facility is one part, again, of the equation, and there will be other facilities that are being contemplated ranging in scale this is an emergency shelter kind of situation 100 to 200 beds uh, there's also discussions about smaller uh, kind of uh, transitional housing type facilities I believe I saw Mr. Peltz in the audience I'm not sure if he's still here uh, but Stephen Peltz from the Kern County Housing Authority uh, was here earlier and if he's still here he could probably respond and provide some additional information on resources as well thank you And then um, I just have a question uh, for Ms. Kitchen. Um, so low barrier uh, emergency housing, is this then meant to be a temporary, like a, like is the facility being provided a, cent a center that will serve for an endless amount of years or is it meant no, to be sort of? No, no, like it's intended to be for a maximum of five years. Uh, that's what we've seen in other places to really address the issue. And then the hope is that over time, uh, we're eventually not in a crisis situation anymore. This is addressed to address the crisis that's at hand today, uh, and we're hoping that within five years, this, this facility is no longer needed, and we've moved people into longer-term solutions. Okay, great. Because that was my question. The, the the M2 zoning. I was wondering how that fit in with the housing. Yeah. Reasons. So, the city is subject to zoning as well. Yep. Uh, we play by our own rules, and these types of facilities do require that zoning. However, if something, I mean, we're still open to ideas. If another site becomes available or become, we become aware of something that's another fit or another solution, this site could still function as Wheel Park. Uh, the zone change doesn't preclude that. It would be grandfathered in under, under that zoning. Great. And then my last question uh, is for yourself and uh, recreation in part uh, is just the, um, what progress is being made to, because I think even, the while sounds like uh, it's been underutilized, uh, the effort to provide kind of an equal facilitation that maybe is more neighborhood centered, um, is, that, is that lip service right now or are there, is it tied to the proposal to where? It's not tied to this proposal directly, but of course, if this park were to go offline, we would wanna offset that and replace that and Ms. Hoover can speak more to that. Uh, but that being said, 
even if this proposal were not before us this evening, uh, I think there's still a definite interest in relocating this park or finding one that's in a bet that better serves the neighborhood. Uh, if you haven't been out there, I encourage you to do so. I've walked the site in the neighborhood myself, uh, and it just doesn't, it's not accessible for the neighborhood there. Uh, the community, uh, especially between 34th Street and Columbus, it needs better access to better amenities. And so we're looking at sites within that area. There's a few vacant parcels that we might pursue uh, purchasing. Uh, we're also working with the Bakersfield City School District to see if there's an opportunity for co-use of the elementary school that's in the area. And then in, in your history of, or your research of what other cities have done, are there kind of, I don't want to say mitigation measures, but are there kind of neighborly things that these facilities do to provide I think so. A lot of best practices because, of course, you want to be a good neighbor. Uh, you want to provide a solution to a problem that we already have uh, before us, not make a worse situation. Uh, so, yeah, any... we're actually going down to visit several services or several existing facilities over the next 30 to 60 days, uh, and we'll be learning everything we can from them on how to be a good neighbor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, those are all commissioner questions at okay. this time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will now provide a time to provide rebuttal comments. Uh, again, this is a five minute total time for all speakers, so please be succinct and be respectful of uh, all members of the audience wishing to speak. Um, we will start with rebuttal comments in support of the project, since we just heard from the opposition. Um, is there anyone in the audience wishing to provide rebuttal on this item? If so, please be prepared to step for the podium, to the podium. Um, as stated, we only have five minutes, so please be succinct. Um, are there anyone wish, is there anyone wishing to speak uh, in, as, provide rebuttal comments in support of the project? Seeing no, uh, speakers, uh, I will provide a rebuttal period for those in opposition. Uh, again, this is a five minute total time, so if you have comments, please be respectful of others who wish to speak. Are there any speakers wishing to speak in opposition? The same item. So this is a chance to respond to uh, the conversation we've had to date and uh, provide any additional comments you might have. But seeing no one uh, wishing to provide. Oh, yes. Um, more of a quick question rather than a rebuttal. Oh, please step forward and uh, ask your question. Um, please state your name as well. Christian Balthazar, I'm more than in favor of any um, potential solution that we have to address the current homeless crisis that exists. And by all means, I'm in favor of anything that we can do to address it. I'm just wondering, um, given that we've looked at major cities like Los Angeles and seeing how they're sort of addressing their situation, is there anything that is going to be put in place? Um, as you mentioned, a lot of these individuals do have pets, and you may have hopefully heard about um, the major typhus outbreaks that cities like Los Angeles have experienced um, because of their current homelessness crisis and uh, whether we would be addressing or putting things into place to pre-curve that, if you will. Yes. Thank you. Um, just some more questions. I'm Victoria Martinez. Um, I don't know, is there advantage of the property being city versus private? I don't know. Are, will the city be compensated for the use of the land? Um, <clears throat> also, the area I was um, of residency was uh, 34th Street South, not to Columbus, which I believe is north. Um, I'm all in favor of the bridge housing. Um, but with all the vacancies and dilapidated properties that are in the area everywhere, um, I'm just wondering why something like that would not work. <laughs> um, let's see, I'm scribbled a bunch of stuff. I, that's all I can think of. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other rebuttal 
uh, comments in opposition. Seeing none, uh, Mr. Egger, as we were asked a question uh, from one of the rebuttal, do, can we have s staff answer a question during the rebuttal period? If, if the a little chair, non-traditional. If, if the chair would like, yes. I would like, yes. Uh, Ms. Kitchen, <laughs> I know you just returned to your seat. Uh, maybe we should just set up a chair right next to the <laughs> Um, could you speak to I any? I used to have a chair here. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I know someone's sitting in it. Um, yeah, uh, I can respond to the questions if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the potential for health or safety issues, absolutely, we will have things in place for that. Personally, that's one of my biggest concerns and priorities uh, in doing this. Being the former department head for the building department, health and safety is one of my most forefront concerns. Uh, we've heard just, we've, again, the research is still in progress, but that's part of the reason we'll be doing these site visits to look at best practices and to ensure that we have all the appropriate staff uh, and mechanisms and safeties in place to avoid things. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know how you want to look at it, but we're not the first people that need to do this, uh, so we'll be able to learn from the mistakes of others in the past. Uh, and then to uh, the other question related to compensation for the city, this is a city-owned property and it's a city proposed capital project. Uh, so there is no compensation for the city. Uh, this is something that we will be funding the construction of. Thank you. Okay. Um, it looks like the rebuttal period has closed and we're back to the uh, aerial map. So I will now close the public hearing on this item and return to the commission for comment and action. Commissioner Bell. So I can give an opinion, yes, all right. So now is uh, the time. Now's the time. So watching very closely over the last year as Measure N was being considered, I. Uh, I do want to compliment uh, both staff, uh, Ms. Kitchen, uh, many, many others that are looking carefully at the budgets and the resources needed to end homelessness, a big job, uh, mental health issues, et cetera. And so uh, I, I uh, have great favor over this, watching Bakersfield match uh, the efforts of the county, Kerncog, in the city and other efforts to help uh, curb the issues of homelessness and mental health. It is a major issue. Uh, this is, uh, in my view, a, uh, an outstanding way to uh, be proactive, and I congratulate you in that effort, and uh, thank you, and we'll support efforts going forward. Our city is very important, and even our least are very important. We have to organize that effort. Health, thank you for those questions. Those are outstanding questions. How do we mitigate that? Uh, and uh, I can tell you that our police forces and our city have looked very, very hard in ways to collaborate, and this is an outstanding first step. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Coleman. Thank you. <clears throat> I've seen this wild park, and uh, this is definitely, uh, if it wasn't owned by us, it would be blighted, <laughs> and so we'd want to do something in terms of redevelopment for it. So uh, I'm glad to see that we've come up with a, a use that uh, benefits the community in a number of ways. Yes, this project is going to require some challenges. This whole idea of low barrier housing has a lot of uh, challenges when you start to invite people in with their pets and with, their, with all their belongings. Uh, but I'm confident that uh, the staff uh, can uh, partner with uh, agencies that are capable of managing their way through that. I'm anxious to see how they ha how they handle some of those problems. I have some of the same questions about, you know, what do you do with the dogs and the cats and the birds and all that, and, and how do you separate with the people? And I don't know what the answers are, are to that, but this is a really a, definitely a good step in my mind. Uh, the fact that it's already city-owned property allows our money to go a little farther in that uh, we don't have to go out and buy a lot in addition to uh, uh, building something. So uh, to me, this is a really good project. It's a, uh, a piece of property that needs some attention anyway. So uh, I don't see anything wrong with this project. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Coleman. Commissioner Rudnick. 
I agree. I think it's a, a great use of a, I don't know, neglected maybe is a good word for that parcel. And uh, it's in an area that shouldn't hopefully disturb too many folks with, with the, uh, the homeless. And uh, I'm really happy that the city of Bakersfield is actually being proactive in a huge problem that we have. And I don't think people realize how big it is. And, and I've grown up here my whole life and I've never seen anything like what we're experiencing. And it's just, it seems like every day it gets worse. And I don't know where they come from. I don't know what causes it, but it's, it's almost in an epidemic type of a level. So I am very, very happy and, and uh, excited that we're being proactive. Uh, you, one of the other questions that kind of comes to mind is that this is a temporary facility and it, they're going to kind of, people are going to come in and then they're going to see what their problem is and try and solve it and get them back out into being productive folks, et cetera. But if they need long-term housing, is that another step we have to figure out? I mean, it sounds like this is great, but where do we put them after that? And, you know, I guess all the all the pieces of the puzzle hasn't been figured out, but we got to start somewhere. And uh, I, again, I think it's a very in smart, intelligent use of that land and a great area. So, um, you know, I commend the staff and council and everybody who's uh, been involved in getting this concept going. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lomas. About less than two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to spend three days in downtown LA. And everything that you're seeing in the news right now, it's real. In fact, it's probably worse. Um, you say you've never seen anything. Go walk downtown LA. The tents, the pictures that we all see on the news, it's horrific down there. Downtown LA is a beautiful place and it's not safe to walk. It's not safe for the people that are on the streets. Um, there's, it's, the, the diseases that you're talking about, you can walk in, you can see why. It, it, nobody should live like that. When, I didn't know this was coming when I was reading our material to get prepared for the meeting tonight and I looked at this and I went, that's good planning. Um, I commend and I imagine Jackie, you had a lot to do with this. That's the best planning I've ever seen. And it's, and it is a really valiant effort to, to take a piece of this huge problem that our, our society is facing. And, and, and I love that it's a multi-pronged approach. And there is, this is just a, a start, but thank you. Thank you for this work. And I'm really happy to support this. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other commissioners wishing to speak before I am? All right, then I'll say a few things. Uh, I just, I do think, um, what we're experiencing, uh, and, uh, the entire West Coast really is something that um, is definitely a crisis, an emergency. And I think um, the, um, like you mentioned, uh, knowing Wild Park, I know it well. It's uh, the recycling center next door in the Amazon world is very convenient for downtown residents. Uh, and so um, having driven by that site many times, I think, um, uh, you know, there are some mature trees that would be great if that could, they could be integrated into the placemaking of this uh, emergency shelter. Um, but I do think um, it is very thoughtful to, um, I mean, the homeless community here are part of our community and I think they deserve respect, they deserve dignity. Uh, they also logistically should be located in, uh, in a location where they can access services conveniently. And I think that um, as a city, we should do what we can to support um, support solutions to a problem that is very vast and very complex. Uh, I would also um, commend staff for the the recognition that um, placing an emergency shelter in a neighborhood doesn't mean the neighborhood has to be forgotten. And I think seeing the opportunity to transfer an amenity to a location that would actually better serve uh, walking distance uh, neighborhood street. I think that's a real, I would really, I know we're not voting on that tonight, but I am a proud 
supporter of that because I think um, this is a great established older neighborhood in Bakersfield and I think we need to cherish those and, and help keep them thriving. Um, yeah, I would um, say that I um, yeah, appreciate this proposal. Again, when I was reading through the agenda for tonight, I was, I appreciate the proactive approach. The, um, you know, when Major N was discussed and we voted, it was all what could be is and what might be is, and now we're, now we have the opportunity to, to see, can we make it happen? And I, I'm, I appreciate the efforts that are before us tonight. I did have one question. I know this is not the time for questions, but um, I think homelessness and shelters are something that can, can warrant a lot of emotional responses and a lot of unknowns can become, you know, kind of scary. So what, what additional public review is available going forward as far as in planning and development of this, um, of this facility? Will the public have any more opportunity to know more of the specifics? You know, after you mentioned a, uh, Ms. Kitchen mentioned a, uh, you know, a fact-finding mission to kind of see what worked and what didn't in other cities. Once that's known and the plan's more concrete, will, this, will, will the citizens and the neighbors have an opportunity to, to see what's being proposed in more finite detail? Uh, Commissioner Cater, Jackie Kitchen. Uh, so this is the public hearing part of the process. The other side of it is the budget adoption process. Uh, from a land use perspective, this type of use is permitted by right in the M2 zone that is being proposed. Uh, so there would be a site plan review and it would be a ministerial process after that. Yes. Uh, but that being said, this isn't something that goes up overnight. Uh, we have a mid-year budget process. We have the Citizens Oversight Committee process uh, that there was a proposal last night. It's the City Council meeting that they meet again at mid-year uh, to review the status, to review the progress on implementation of Measure N. Uh, so I would say there are multiple opportunities for the public to participate and continue to comment. Uh, and if I may answer Mr. Rudnick's question about the permanent solution, uh, there was also $5 million out allocated for permanent supportive housing uh, to be the sec second step after the emergency housing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I see no other. Commissioner Bowers, did you, you had a comment? Did you? Oh. All right. Just like to commend the, uh, the city for your work uh, on this. I was particularly happy to see the mental health piece. I know in our community we've never seen homelessness this pronounced. And so for the work you guys have done, I know this is something very arduous to understand, but the exceptional job your team done. So well done, especially on the mental health piece. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other. No other commissioner comments on this, uh, on item 5G. May I have a motion to adopt staff's recommendation? I'd like to make that motion. Commissioner Lomas, may I have a second? I'd like to second that. Commissioner Komen. Commissioners, please cast your vote. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, we are now moving to item 5B. Mr. Coyle, will you please provide your staff report? I will, Mr. Chair, as soon as I get my screen back, please. All right. Let's just savor the moment. Okay. Yep. And now if you will give me just a, a second to find the right slide.
Project 5B, General Plan Amendment, Zone Change 18-0448. Hageman Land Partners, LLC, on behalf of Frontier Land Partners, LLC, is requesting this General Plan Amendment and Zone Change. The project is located on 8.53 acres on the southwest corner of the Renfro Road, Santa Fe Way intersection. The applicant's reason for the request is to meet market demand for light industrial uses in Northwest Bakersfield and to provide a buffer between future residential development to the south of the site and the existing railroad line to the north. The traffic analysis for the project assumed a scenario where a series of 5,000 to 10,000 square foot buildings would operate as offices, warehouses with yards, and where the maximum building hour, uh, area would be 50,000 square feet. The GPA zone change request would change the land use designation from resource intensive agriculture to light industrial on 8.53 acres. The zone change request would change the zoning district from agriculture to light manufacturing on 8.53 acres. Staff has concluded that the project is consistent with surrounding development, the general plan, and the zoning ordinance. Staff recommends one, adopting the mitigated negative declaration, and two, approving the general plan amendment and zone change. This concludes our staff report. Thank you, Mr. Coyle. The public hearing on this item is open. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the project? If so, please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Good evening, uh, commissioners and staff. My name is Brian Beatty, and I'm speaking tonight on behalf of the applicant. Some of you know that I dedicate the majority of my time um, to our home building business. And then in addition to home building, we are builders of residential lots that serve not only our own home building um, activities, but also local um, small builders. Um, our family's been um, in the building business and the lot production business for over three generations here in Bakersfield. Um, we are not um, really industrial developers, or I've never built an industrial building. The real purpose here for this application is, to, as staff said, is to create the buffer between the backyard so that when, so if you look on the screen, immediately south um, or below the yellow line, that is an area that has approved tentative tract map with residential use. So we'll have buyers that are buying homes with a backyard and they won't know what's behind them. And at least in uh, Bakersfield, the agricultural zone typically is kind of a transition zone. So we're concerned that our neighbors would not know whether it would be light industrial M1, multifamily apartments, you know, commercial. And so this get, we believe this is going to give our home buyers more certainty as they look forward to their purchase and investment in their home. Um, the land that we're discussing tonight has been um, owned by my family for more than a quarter century. We purchased this property. Um, and have farmed it continuously um, since 1992. Uh, we believe this application that we bring tonight is an example of good planning and that um, your approval tonight will allow these future residents of our adjacent R1 home sites to have that reasonable expectation of what the future holds for them. We've retained um, experienced consultants to prepare and submit the uh, relevant environmental reports and studies as directed by staff. We've reviewed staff's written report and conditions of approval, and we uh, would ask that you um, support staff's recommendation, and I'll be available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other audience member wishing to speak in favor of item 5B? Seeing no additional speakers in favor, is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the project? If so, please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Rebecca Davis. I represent Sustainers Alliance for Environmental Responsibility and its members living and working in Bakersfield. I'd like to um, comment on item 5B, and I, we had emailed some comments earlier today. I have hard copies also printed out. If, if 
anyone would like them. Um, these comments discuss the reasons why we believe the MND prepared for the project is insufficient. I'm sorry, one sec. The comments, did you provide them to staff already has them? Yeah. Do you want hard copies? We, we have them, the same staff, comments, right? staff provided them to the commission already. You guys should have a copy. It's this part, right? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure we had them before you sure. continue. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, the comments discuss why we think an EIR is required for this program or this project. So I just want to cover a few points uh, raised in those comments. First, our consultant reviewed the MND's air quality analysis and determined that it fails to properly evaluate the emissions of diesel particulate matter. Our consultant determined, conducted a screening level analysis for health risk assessment and found that at maximum potential build out, the increased cancer risk to nearby residential receptors was potentially 57 in 1 million. And these values greatly exceed the Sacramento, uh, pardon, the uh, San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District significance threshold, which is 10 in 1 million. So we believe an EIR is needed to fully analyze and mitigate this significant impact. In addition, we have expert comments of biologist Dr. Sean Smallwood, who looked at the projects, and he uh, concluded that there are impacts to biological resources that have not been properly analyzed and mitigated. Specifically, Dr. Smallwood found that the MND failed to identify all of the special status species that may occur on site, and the proposed mitigation measures do not reduce the impact to wildlife to less than significant levels. Additionally, the MND failed to address the impact of vehicle collisions on wildlife, and the MND improperly analyzed the project's impacts on wildlife movement. The MND finally also failed to analyze the project's cumulative impacts on wildlife. Again, we believe these inadequacies must be addressed in an EIR. Finally, the MND impermissibly defers some mitigation measures for identified impacts, which is not allowed under CEQA. For example, to mitigate the project's impacts on biological resources, the MND calls for a survey by wildlife biologists prior to breaking ground and that the applicant or developer then be subject to additional mitigation measures recommended by a qualified biologist. Case law is clear that mitigation measures that do no more than require a report be prepared and followed does not provide adequate information for informed decision making under CEQA. So to conclude, we believe that MND is inadequate for this project and ask the Planning Commission to decline to approve the MND and instead require staff to prepare an EIR for the project. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak in opposition to the project? If so, please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Seeing no additional speakers, uh, I will open up uh, for commissioner questions uh, for the public and staff on this item. Remember, this is not the time to express an opinion, only to ask questions. Are there any commissioner questions? Seeing no questions, oh. you have one? Oh, I did, couldn't tell. Okay. Um, Commissioner Lumet. I'm sorry, I just saw this. So to the speaker, I'm sorry, I didn't get her name. Where'd she go? Uh, Rebecca. There she is. Rebecca. So you're a law, a law, you're representing a law firm? Uh, I work at a law firm, but we're representing a group of local citizens. Are we, are we, can you tell us who those people are? They are a group of local citizens that are concerned with environmental protection. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Are there any other commissioner questions? Commissioner Rudnick. I have a question for uh, the developer, Mr. Betty. How, how do you uh, plan on mitigating between the LR zoning and what you're proposing, uh, walls, landscaping, et cetera? How, how do you propose that? Uh, 
concrete block walls are separating between those units. Standard six foot That's wall. That's a standard, I believe, in the city between a R1 and an M1 zone. Okay. And then the setbacks would be a little bit larger for houses to that brick wall? Right. They're I mean, a block wall, excuse me. They're larger than, um, than the zoning um, minimum for that area, yes. So there'd be plenty of buffer between yeah. the residential use and the, and the industrial or commercial use? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Commissioner Lomas. Okay, just trying to digest this. So, simply put, you are not in agreement with staff's recommendation. Could we hear from staff? And I see that you staff has responded line by line to the complaint. So, could we get a synopsis from staff? Uh, yes, Commissioner Lomas, I will have uh, Steve Esselman, Principal Planner, come up and address the question. But first, I'd like to say that we received this 92-page letter at 10 a.m. this morning, and we did our best to respond to the letter in a timely manner. We are confident that this project can go forward, and as it moves its way to City Council, we would be able to dig into the letter a little deeper. Okay, thank uh, you. But I have Steve Appreciate Esselman here if you have uh, some other questions. That'd be great. And for what you were, what work you were able to do in such a short amount of time, thank you for that. Hi, I'm Steve Esselman. I'm the uh, principal planner of advanced planning. I oversee general plan amendments and zone changes on behalf of the city. How can I uh, help you? What I'm mostly interested in, you have a 92-page document, and um, you, have, you have responded. So could you just give us the highlights of, of why you're confident in, in your stance and the city's stance as we're in, um, in response to the complaints? Sure, I, I can do that for you. Um, first, I'd like to say that this is, was a cursory response. Again, I had about six hours to respond to a 90, first digest 92 pages and then respond. So. Um, I did respond with about a one-page summary um, going forward if, if your commission was to uh, continue this project on to City Council I would uh, spend a little more time to delve a little bit more deeply and provide the City Council with sort of a full breakdown of the and a more in-depth analysis and response to comments on this comment letter my guess would be that I would probably receive a few more comment letters before this thing is all over and I'd probably have to respond to those as well the comments, in my opinion, broke down to three main issues. Essentially, they were worried about project description consistency. They were worried about biological resources impacts, and they were worried about air quality impacts. Um, I know that the, um, the applicant has pro uh, brought uh, quali the qualified air quality specialists as well as the biologists that did the survey. They could probably answer uh, specific questions if you would like. But generally, um, f let's start with the project description consistency um, issue. Um, often we come at such an advanced planning stage, usually people want to change a land use but don't know exactly how they want to configure the site. When I'm sort of given a black box like that, what I do is what's called a maximum intensity scenario. I say, what is the zone that you want? What is the acreage? So therefore, how many houses could be built, or in this case, what is the square footage? In this case, the applicant actually said we're, gonna, we're going to cap it at 50,000 square feet. And that's what all of the environmental analyzed, a total of 50,000 square feet. How you want to configure it, it's a total of 50,000 square feet, and that is what we analyzed. Um, moving forward, I will be providing a little bit more clarification on the actual project description as I get more information from the applicant going forward towards the, um, the City Council if, again, you decide to approve this project and recommend approval. Uh, second was the biology report. I can, again, we have a, the qualified biologist here that actually prepared the report, that did the survey. He could speak uh, more intelligently than I can about the specifics of his survey. Um, but what he did was a typical um, pre-construction survey. He went out, he determined that there were no special status species, habitats, blue line streams, or any other biological related um, issue area 
that he could determine during his, his uh, field survey, and he wrote it up. He determined um, that with um, a pre-construction survey and compliance with the Metropolitan Bakersfield Habitat Conservation Plan, impacts, potentially significant impacts, could be reduced to a level of less than significant. Um, staff agrees with that conclusion. In terms of air quality, the project actually qualifies what's called a small project analysis level, meaning it is under a certain size that it actually uh, meets the criteria to be analyzed under the small project per the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District. San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District has determined that if your project is below this small level of analysis, your project, at least for criteria pollutants, is, is considered less than significant, meaning they have determined that projects of these sizes would not have a significant impact to criteria pollutants. In terms of health risk assessment, I would actually defer that to the um, air quality specialist that is in the audience if you'd like to speak a little bit more about um, the minutia of a health risk assessment. Um, and that's, that's about all I have to say about all of that, unless you have other questions. Keep driving and I'll take the wheel if I need to. <laughs> You're good. I'm curious to see what, because I have some further questions, but I'll let you go over. But, okay. Um, I, I'll step back and I'll let you go and then I'll jump back in. Go ahead. Keep going. And I'll, uh, I'm still. Oh, I'd like questions. to hear from that. The, I mean, this thing was dropped. I can't do opinions. I'd like to hear from the, the, the experts in the room. That was actually yes. my question too. So. There you go. So let's. Can we? Can we start with the uh, biologist? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, as uh, Commissioner yeah. Lomas, Steve Pruitt through the chair. Um, again, we had a letter dropped on us this afternoon. Um, I'd like to say we stand by our report. Uh, however, without having had opportunity to go line by line through the comment letter, I don't know if this is the appropriate time or place to address that. We are more than happy to address that in writing if staff requests. But. Uh, a couple hours on a long letter like that, just off the cup. I don't know if this is the appropriate time to try and get into that. We stand by our report. Okay. Um, can do you mind just for our edification summarizing your report as far as what your findings were on the site? Our reconnaissance level report is a standard that we prepared before, which is a snapshot in time mm -hmm. that looks at current conditions. It's an evaluation of both state and federal databases for uh, listed, threatened, special status, other species that could occur in the vicinity, in the region, and an assessment based on the habitat conditions and the likelihood of occurrence and impacts to those things. And you're finding in the report, yeah, okay. Following uh, our report uh, goes through the CEQA checklist, and I think you should have a copy of that with you. That yes that states based on what we took a look at, based on the databases, based on our evaluation, that uh, we follow the CEQA checklist to, uh, to meet those standards. Uh, Commissioner Lomas, did you have? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can I have the uh, air quality specialist? Good evening. I'm Ron Hunter with Insight Environmental uh, Trinity Consultants here in Bakersfield. We've been doing air quality in San Joaquin Valley for 40 years or more. Um, <clears throat> just to further go along with uh, Steve's earlier comment about what the district requires for a small project, the limit for a light industrial project is 510,000 square feet. Anything under that, the district has run thousands of projects and found that Anything under that can't probably uh, amount to much, can never become a significant impact to their quality in the valley. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, this project is 50,000 square feet, less than 10% of the total. So it can't have a significant impact to air quality. We've actually done a 
calculations of the model, and, and it was way, way, way under. The um, commenter, and again, like everyone else, I've had uh, a couple hours to look at this thing. Um, they have concentrated on health risk, and primarily for um, when the commenter commented about um, the, the numbers being <clears throat> more than 10 in a million, that's true, but their number that they came up with was for infants, and the district does not require health risk issues or evaluation for infants. Uh, the, the state does, and so we're doing that, but we don't expect the numbers to come up to anywhere close to 10 in a million. Um, the other thing that the error that was made in the analysis that was done by the commenter's consultant was they considered uh, diesel particulate matter. The applicant has indicated to us, at least in the information we got on the project, that there will be little to no diesel traffic at the site. And in fact, the traffic engineer considered uh, an ITE method that didn't consider any truck traffic coming in and out of the site. What the site's planned for is not going to be truck intensive. So we don't expect there to be much, if any, diesel particulate matter emissions, which is the only thing we would have to run health risk for in this case. So we stand behind the report. We think that if for some reason um, in the future there's uh, an additional amount of truck traffic that's not currently anticipated, perhaps the health risk would be a uh, value then, but not for long-term emissions, we don't think. Not for this point. Questions? I guess a follow-up question for staff. The, um, there was, oh, I can't say my comment. It's hard, I, well, I can't say my opinion, sorry. Um, does the, the zoning is, is a light industrial. Does, is there any provisions within that zoning that precludes diesel or more intensive uses? I am not aware of any restrictions against diesel in that, uh, in that zoning district. And it, and my understanding is there's no condition on the project that precludes diesel. Is that? That would be correct. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner, oh, Commissioner Rudnick, I'm sorry. I was not looking at my technology. Commissioner Lemus, I'm going to. Thank you. That's okay. I want to follow <laughs> um, up on your oh, question. Keep the question. Uh, maybe just make one comment real quickly. Uh, if we're. Uh, you guys are mean. I can't make a comment. Sorry. Okay. We're keeping you honest. I will go we'll get your my, time. My question. Uh, this is to the, the, the lady that was here from the law firm. Uh, can I ask if you? Yeah. Hi. Uh, your firm specializes, I'm guessing, on this type of environmental situations? We do. And do you guys go all up and down the state of California and kind of work these situations when you see them or where you're asked or however that works? That's correct. So this is a major part of your guys' practice that you do these type of things when folks want to take rural land and get it into more uh, high density uses, is that correct? Um, we work on a number of different environmental areas. One of them is, is CEQA, and so um, it's not necessarily, you know, changes to rural environments. It may be um, land use changes and, you know, various environmental impacts around the state. Would you say that most of it's farmland conversion or less, or how does that kind of work with you, what you guys mm, do? It really varies. I, I, Occasionally it is, not always. But it's kind of that type of stuff. So that's kind of what you guys do full time up and down the state looking at these situations. Am I saying that correctly? Um, one portion of what we do is, is address issues raised under CEQA and make sure that the law, that CEQA is being applied as we believe appropriate to um, fully consider and the impacts and then mitigate those impacts. Um, land use changes are, you know, kind of where that begins. And so sometimes we come in at this level, other times um, 
there's, you know, sometimes it's a, for a broader plan or other various types of projects around the state. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. That was, that was it. Thank you, Commissioner Rudnick. Commissioner Lomas. Sorry. Okay, I'm not sure who can answer this question. So by right, they can have truck traffic go through. Yes? Okay. Mr. Uh, Hunter. Is there a way to determine right now if that could affect your report if truck traffic was maxed out? Um, <clears throat> it's hard to tell what maxed out means, but um, uh, during our investigation and during our uh, calculations, we contemplated 14% truck traffic in the area. <clears throat> we actually did that in error because when we re-looked at that, that was what the, the default measure was for the model. <clears throat> we used Cal to do, uh, to do the emissions model. And that still came up with uh, particulate emissions that were very, very low. And if we run a health risk assessment on this project, I'm pretty certain, quite certain, it will not trigger any, any issues. We only consider operational emissions, which are long term. The district has reviewed the SPAL that was done for this project and had no comment. So this is something that they would probably have mentioned if they had felt it was an issue. Commissioner Rudnick. Sorry, I've got another question for, uh, I'm sorry, what was your, your uh, Mr. Hunter. Um, so th this parcel is currently zoned intensive agriculture, correct? Yes, that's my understanding. Farming, it looks, it looks like open ground, row crops, that kind of stuff. I mean, diesel tractors and diesel this and diesel that farm that land, right? Right. I, I mean, logically, if you're, if you're taking, not, not an opinion, I'm just asking you, your opinion. Please you are on me tonight. Logically, would this maybe actually reduce diesel particulates, taking it out of intensive agriculture and turning it into uh, what the uh, developer is requesting. Is there any logic to that? Yes, sir, there is. Um, however, in today's um, science and uh, regulatory world, we're not allowed to look at that. I can't look at the reductions from ag lands. We used to do that 20 years ago in air quality studies, <clears throat> but we're not allowed to do that anymore. But I think you're right. There would be, at a minimum, a, a significant offset that would be applied to that. The other thing I'll mention is this is Santa Fe Way. This is a Central Valley Highway. There's a lot of truck traffic that goes up and down that highway. Right. With the amount of um, diesel particulate matter that is already in the ambient air there now, I don't think that what, if, if any trucks are going to ever come onto this site uh, for what its planned use would be, I doubt that you would even notice the difference. And again, we're not talking about ambient air quality here, just that. We're also talking about health risk. And the health risk issues are based on a 75-year span. In over 75 years, the exposure. This is exposure to a human being sitting at the fence line for 75 years, being exposed to the toxic air contaminants. Uh, and I don't think, based on what I've seen so far on this project, that it would be an issue. One other question. W with the clean air standards that are being uh, in, in put on these diesel trucks, pickups, a uh, bit larger rigs, I mean, the, the diesel particulates that they're putting out is dramatically different than what things have been in the past. And as time goes on, it's going to even be less. Am I stating that correctly? That's true. In fact, the cars, the trucks that we drive today are pollute 95 to 99 percent less than what they did 20 years ago. So every year manufacturers are coming up with with better control technologies and so those emissions are going to go down. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Are there any other commissioner questions before I move? Only opinions. All right. We will hold those opinions uh, and we will now provide a rebuttal period. Uh, Commissioner Bell, for questions and not comments. This is a question of the developer, if I may. Uh, 
I'm reading through these documents and I'm quickly trying to figure out, have you willingly reduced the amount of development per acre? Is that something you are putting in as a term of your M1 zone? Is that what I understand? Um, I think we're just trying to be uh, realistic on the site. So this is gonna, we visualize um, this project be something similar to like Easton Drive, if you're familiar with the Easton Drive. Sure. So kind of office slash warehouse, I think the M1 zone requires um, any work or manufacturing to be indoors. I think that's one of the key things of the M1 zone. Um, so it's not an outdoor activity because it's adjacent to the homes that we're building. And so if you looked at, um, I think in a commercial setting, the coverage ratio over a lot, many times might be about 25%, give or take. Um, I think our coverage ratio here is about 12%. So yeah, it's half. half. Enough, so it's 50,000 feet, roughly an acre, a strong acre, and we have roughly nine acres. So it's about an eighth. Like and that. it's even substantially less than that because if parking for a warehouse space is like one in a thousand, one to five hundred, something of that nature. I believe right. that's it's about what it is. So you less literally less could end up at a forty percent coverage on such, and you're locking yourself into a commitment of fifty thousand feet over eight and a half acres. Is that what I understand? Yes, I think the likely tenant, the likely user, might be someone like an electrical contractor or something, and so he has a little storage yard in the back, has a little office, maybe has a little bit of material inside. Yes. So not a, it, you know, it's, um, we believe that's its highest and best use. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bell. Uh, I think that concludes Commissioner comments. Uh, or sorry, Commissioner questions, not comments. Um, so I will now move to a time uh, of rebuttal uh, where those in favor and those in opposition will given, be given five minutes to uh, provide responses to the many questions and co uh, not comments and thoughts that we've all had. Um, since we last heard from the opposition, uh, I will provide a five minute rebuttal period for the, those in favor of the project. Again, just a reminder of protocol, this is a five minute total time for all speakers. So please be succinct, uh, please be careful not to repeat previous speakers, and be respectful of everyone that wishes to speak so that everyone has the time to do so. That being said, are there anyone, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to provide comments in favor, uh, rebuttal comments in favor of the project? If so, please step to the microphone and begin. Okay. Seeing uh, no one coming to the microphone, I will now move to providing rebuttal comments for those in opposition. Is there anyone in opposition to the project who wishes to provide rebuttal comments during this time? Okay, seeing a head shake, I will now close the public hearing and return it to commission for comment and action. Commissioner Komen, right out the gate. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I wanted to commend the developer, Mr. Beatty, for uh, taking the initiative to uh, determine what that parcel is going to be used for. Because if you didn't do that, the real estate people will tell them it's going to be a park. So, so, uh, so I, I appreciate that you're making the effort to do this. Um, uh, I think this is a good use of that of that sp that lot on Santa Fe. And so, um, and then I appreciate the uh, engineers coming forth and talking about uh, uh, what they've done in terms of studying this project. And I assume that uh, you'll make a more detailed uh, response to the uh, to the commenter uh, in the future. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rudnick. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I think it's a, a great use in the fact that you're surrounded on three sides by streets and, and a railroad, and it's a tough piece, I mean, to try and figure out what to do with it. And you need to have some kind of a buffer between your residential, which it sounds like you're doing with the low density. Um, you know, I think part of the 
opposition to this is that you know folks don't want to see ag land converted into other uses well i mean it happens and it's a private enterprise and, and folks can do that kind of thing and there's a tremendous amount of agriculture land out there in california and i think it's a it's a great use and uh i think that the uh, the law firm that's uh working um uh, with the folks locally is really uh, quite aggressive and I think it's uh, it's kind of overkill what they're really pushing on this project. I appreciate everybody has an opinion, everybody uh, has a view, but uh, I think for the the situation that you're going from intensive agriculture, which I've been around uh, through my life and there's a heck of a lot of diesel spewed when you're farming and uh, I think it's going to be a reduction in the diesel particulates from my experience. So uh, I commend the developer as well. I think it's a good use, and uh, I think it'll be a great project. Thank you, Commissioner Rudnick. Commissioner Lomas. I have a question for Mr. Iger. Given um, testimony tonight and this document, are you, what is your um, advice or opinion should would we benefit to a continuance to let staff better address this or are you confident enough to let it have us send it forth what I heard tonight was that this has been studied effectively by the experts they did their initial study they provided sufficient documents to support the mitigated neg deck this item will also go to City Council for a public hearing as, as the next step. So staff will have time to provide more comments, as will the law firm and the commenters. So I feel like we are at a stage where it's, it can be recommended by you guys to go to City Council for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Wade. This will be brief. Uh, I think this kind of hysterical obstinance to projects like this or would give the environmental lobby a bad name in California. Uh, I'm in favor of this project. Um, seeing no other commissioner comments, may I have a motion? Given had Commissioner Wade's succinct comment, may I have a motion? <laughs> motion to approve staff's recommendation. Commissioner Wade, may I have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Rudnick, please cast your votes, commissioners. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with us. We are now moving on. We have two remaining hearings. Do you need a break? Okay, I would like to request a five minute break. We will reconvene at 7.15. All right, commissioners, 7.15 has come and gone. My apologies for the additional minute. Uh, we will now reconvene. I wanna be respectful of the audience this time. Um, so Mr. Coyle, uh, please, we will now move on to item 5H. Please provide your staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just starting here with a uh, aerial site before I move the slides. Project 5H, Plan Development Review 19-0141. This is a multifamily project for the Housing Authority of the County of Kern. The project is an 81-unit apartment complex on 5.22 acres of an undeveloped 9.76-acre parcel in the multiple-family dwelling slash planned unit development zone, located at 3345 Bernard Street, just southeast of the East Hills Mall. A similar request was approved by your commission in June 2018. However, the site development plans have since been substantially revised and therefore requires reconsideration by your commission. The complex will consist of five two-story buildings for housing 
and one two-story manager quarters slash community room. The complex will contain 40 one-bedroom units, 20 two-bedroom units, and 21 three-bedroom units for an overall total of 81 units. As a project for the Housing Authority of the County of Kern, the units will be rent restricted to moderate, low, and very low income. This is defined as being at or below the 120% of the median income of Kern County as established by the State of California. The project has been designed in compliance with requirements of city standards and policies to include design standards for large retail developments and no deviations from zoning ordinance standards have been requested. Staff recommends your commission adopt the resolution and su suggested findings approving the plan development review as depicted in the project description and subject to the listed mitigation and conditions of approval. This concludes our staff report. Thank you, Mr. Coyle. The public hearing on this item is open. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of the project? If so, please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Honorable Chairman and Commissioners, uh, I'm Stephen Pels, the Executive Director of the Housing Authority of the County of Kern. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the owner of the property as well as the developer of the residences at East Hills. Um, we ultimately will not be the long-term owner of the property as uh, we'll be forming a limited partnership that includes a private investor uh, who will help finance uh, the development. Uh, but we will uh, manage the property on a long-term basis and be involved for the uh, minimum 55-year period that we're required to be involved uh, in the property. Uh, this particular development uh, will be a gated community. It will include an on-site manager, an on-site maintenance worker. Uh, it will uh, also have um, a requirement that we set aside uh, reserve funds um, to take care of any uh, future needs uh, for uh, improvements at the property, such as painting or improving the parking lots, those, type, those types of things. Um, we also um, feel that it will fit an important need in our community, which obviously is the need for affordable housing. Uh, we need over 20,000 units of affordable housing in Kern County right now. Most of those are needed in Bakersfield, so this will make a small dent uh, in that very big need. It will also set aside half the units for veterans, uh, which is a population that um, is, we have a lot of veterans in our community, and some of those are um, lower income and need affordable uh, rental homes. And so we're pleased to be able to provide that at this location. Um, as uh, Mr. Quell mentioned, your uh, commission did previously approve uh, this development, uh, but as we went forward in the design process and working with the civil engineer and others, we had to make some changes uh, to better accommodate the uh, drainage, uh, retention base, and those type of things. And we also made uh, changes to the um, access point or driveway approaches uh, to the site so that the approaches will ultimately serve um, a second phase, uh, which is not part of your under consideration. But our plan on the eastern portion of the parcel is to do a home ownership uh, development, probably zero, zero lot line or condo type uh, property. And so those common interests will serve eventually uh, a plan, a future second phase. So I welcome uh, any questions you may have. Um, and thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the project? Seeing no additional speakers, is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the project? If so, please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Stan Shires. Was an environmental impact report done on this project? Um, staff, may I believe it was... Uh, project 5H, uh, there is a, a notice of exemption on file for this project, yes. Thank you. Thank so you. then there wasn't one done? 
there, it would, I think a better way to, is there was not one required because it it's falls under yes, the Yes, project is exempt it's from. Exempt. Well, I guess my concern is the Endangered Species Act and the fact that that is habitat for uh, kit fox. In fact, I have a video on my phone of a kit fox with its head stuck in a chain link fence trying to escape the uh, destruction of the habitat when the property was scraped with a tractor. Uh, I've contacted the uh, Fish and Wildlife Department to find out. I, I don't know if the, the uh, endangered species is as important today as it was years ago, but I was uh, informed by the Environmental Department of the Fish and Wildlife that it is and that the city would have a process for dealing with envi uh, endangered species. Um, I'll re-defer to uh, Mr. Coyle. Could you answer uh, just what mitigation measures are required for environment for wildlife and in in endangered species? Uh, well, I was just going to say that they are required to submit a grading plan for the project, and that would take into account uh, the habitat conservation program fees and uh, requirements. You just, just to, on the yeah, just to expand on that, we have the Metropolitan Bakersfield Habitat Conservation Plan that requires the developer to pay before grading to offset any habitat that would be destroyed by this project. And that money is actually used to buy replacement habitat that's managed by the state. So that's a, a plan and it's, it costs the developer based on the number of acres that they use. So that way we can kind of do a one for one exchange and make sure that the wildlife that exists has a place in the future. So then can we at least acknowledge that there are kit foxes on this property? I, I've, I've not seen a study, so I, I can't comment, but I, I take your word for it that you've seen a kit fox on the property. Okay. Hello. Everyone. <laughs> I, my name is Dana Garnier. I live on Pico, right across the street from th this, this. My concern is the traffic from the school. I live right next to Harding and Compton schools. The traffic there is horrible already. I'm also wondering if there's going to be a throughway from Pico to Bernard. Because now we have to go f all around to Oswald and back around just to go to Walmart. If there would be a throughway there that would stop us having to go through the traffic that's from the schools. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? You are making sense. I'm not a speaker. I, I'm just a lady that is concerned. The other thing I'd like to see is their children are always breaking through the fencing that they keep putting up to stop them. There's behind the Tillerman Hill, behind the Tillerman Hill condos is where they want to go just to get to the schools. And they keep breaking open the fences. They've done this for years. I've been there 30 years. And I've said just recently they put up uh, iron grill work to stop them. They put a box there, so the, now they go over the, with the box. But one day I passed there, there was a girl hanging, a little girl, hanging by her dress, hooked on the fence. I don't know what would happen if I hadn't passed. I mean, a little girl on her way to school. <laughs> anyway, that's my concern, is a through way to get, so people don't have to go around. We would like to go, there is the road there that's been blocked off by the Bakersfield Adventist Academy. And, but it's gated, so we can't use it. So that's my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I don't want to re, re uh what she was just saying, but 
there, Pico is a, a neighborhood two-lane street, and there are two schools. That the only access to those schools are on Pico. You have people turning left off of Oswald onto Pico, people coming across Oswald from Pico to Pico, people turning right off Oswald onto Pico, people coming from the west to east on Pico, people going from uh, west Edwards up to Pico. All five of those lanes happen at the same time when people are trying to get their children to school. Now, on that plan, does that show a road going from the back of that complex onto Pico? Yeah, I mean, I, I believe so. Would uh, the applicant like to? <laughs> the driveway, yeah. It's a driveway, but it's not a public road. So it's a, a drive access to a parking lot, not a uh, through road. OK. Hello. Hello. My name is Bill Bean, and I live directly across that from that blue spot you see there at the bottom of the screen. And um, you know, for you guys to, to probably comprehend, you know, all Pico, this and that, basically, if you look to the right of that blue spot on the bottom, you can see the driveway that's going to come out onto Pico, and that's going to be gated, so none of the children that live on the other side of that big area are going to be able to access the school. That's going to be a big, gated, low-income place, and they're going to be blocked out, okay? And then at the other end, you'll see there's a driveway going out onto Bernard Street, which is right there by Walmart and East Hills Mall and all that. Um, and they do not show that they're going to put in double turn lanes or anything. People are going to have to go out. They're going to have to drive all the way up to Oswell, flip a U-turn, and come all the way back down, all those people that live in those apartments. Okay, so that's a mess. So my concern is I think some compensation or there's obviously going to be some loss in property value because it's low income. You have to provide a place for people that are low income. Understand that. And it looks like it's going to be a nice project. But I think to compensate the uh, residents living in the area is on the right side of the green where the driveways come out on each end, they really really should be required to put a nice standard 30 foot wide required road that goes along that area and the driveways can come into that road. There is only one parking spot per apartment. Okay, so guess where they're going to park? They're going to park all the way down that street in front of my house. They're going to park out there on Bernard, which it's a heavy traffic street. And this cross street that would go from Pico at the bottom where the blue is over to Bernard would do a lot of really great things. Number one, you could put a sidewalk along that, require it, so that the children now that live all up and down Bernard can walk down the sidewalk safely and get to the school that's right. It, the school is literally to the right of the green that you see there down on Pico. There's two schools. There's an elementary school and there's a junior high school. Okay, and the traffic there is horrendous, as Dana stated. Um, it would also give the residents in the area something that we've needed for a long time, kind of to compensate for the loss in property value, being able to get across and go to all of that shopping over there, because you literally, it's really difficult to get up to Oswell, go all the way over to Bernard. It's, I would say it's a close to probably probably a little over a half a mile and then come all the way back down. For the kids it's it's horrible because they have to, you know, walk. Okay. The other thing is they could park along that. That would be great extra parking. So all of the residents that are going to be moving into those apartments, 81 apartments, there's 81 parking spots. I counted about 81. 
would be able to park along the, the sidewalk there, and that would give a lot of extra parking, which I think would also really improve the neighborhood, and it would keep it from becoming a mess and having all these people parking down our street, which, which is not going to be great at all. Uh, so that's my suggestions, um, and I thank you for your time and listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other speakers in opposition to the project? Seeing none, uh, I will ask if there are any commissioner questions before we move on to rebuttal. Commissioner Rudnick. Thank you. I've got a couple of questions for staff. Uh, obviously, the traffic has been studied on PICO and how this project impacts it. Is that correct? Good evening, uh, Commissioner and members. Uh, traffic study was not provided. However, the trips were calculated. The apartment complex would uh, produce about 615 trips with two access, one off Bernard and one on Pico. OK, I, I'm actually pretty familiar with that. I actually went to Compton years ago, so I'm pretty familiar with the area. Uh, I, I think there's some legitimacy to their concern about increased traffic uh, on that street. and. Uh, should there be some kind of a traffic uh, study or something uh, in addition to what has been done to, uh, you know, to give more information to the to us? Certainly, uh, I think we can probably ask for the st traffic study. Yes, we can. Because I, I I think that's a pretty legitimate concern that they have, and uh, and then I also had some questions about he, this gentleman. Uh, the last speaker said something about parking on Bernard. I don't remember that you can park on Bernard. Can you park on Bernard? In Bernard, there is a no parking. Yeah, so that's kind of what I remember. So. Yeah, you know what? You're right. It is on Bernard. But they're driving really fast there. Right. That's kind of what I remembered. So um, obviously that won't be an issue. And then the third question I have is that uh, the parking requirements for the R3 for the apartments have obviously been met, or you folks wouldn't have approved it, right? I mean, we haven't narrowed the parking on-site, correct? They've met all on-site requirements? Anything on-site? Yes, but because this is a rent-restricted development, they are eligible for a 25% reduction in parking. So this is, I don't know if substandard is the right word, but this is less parking than a normal R3 project would be required to do? Correct, because others may not have that rent restriction on them. So there, there may be some parking issues that may flood into, let's say, Pico or the Pico neighborhoods? Uh, no, I believe they still would have adequate parking even with the reduction. Okay, I, I, I guess it, it comes down to the socioeconomic issues. I mean, do, this, do those folks not have as many cars? Is that kind of what we're trying to say here? more public transportation, that type of thing? That may be part of the calculation that they have access to transit or don't have as many privately owned vehicles. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, my concern is about the traffic on Pico, and uh, I, I do think there's some concern on my part, at least, that uh, there has to, I just want to make sure the local folks in that neighborhood aren't impacted uh, Adversely, I, I realize the zoning's there and the, and the project can be built, but uh, maybe there's some other ways to help mitigate uh, that increase in traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bell. So I want to address the uh, Kit Fox, if I may, ever so briefly. Um, in my experience, and maybe, Paul, you can help me out with this as well, but uh, there's a report that's going to be required when it, when it goes in through development, and that biota report will, a biologist will look at that, and if they determine, and I please correct me, if they determine uh, that kit foxes are active there, they'll require to be uh, moved. Uh, they're not going to just say, oh, good, there's kit foxes here, and let's, let's just put a big old building up in their place. And, um, and then the fees as well. So it is an expensive process in development these days, especially commercially, when it comes to 
displacing any animal that's endangered. And if they are, in fact, located, and as you've suggested, they're active there, uh, these animals are going to be cared for and moved, and there will be additional fees for that effort as well. It will be the developer who will bear that cost. Uh, so am I wrong, staff, in any way there? I just wanted to uh, make sure I responded to you on that. Thank you. That was marginally a question. But <laughs> I just wanted to say. Uh, I'm sorry. We, uh, Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll have a time for rebuttal comments for applicants. Uh, this is just a time to ask questions about what we've, the information we've heard. Uh, are there any other commissioner questions? Oh, if you'd like to make comments, though, there is a period. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other commissioner questions? I just had a quick one, reading through the staff report. Um, proximity to transit lines, do you know, get bus routes? Uh, 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 yeah. There's one bus route, it's bus 41. Bus 41, down Bernard. Okay. And then a question for the applicant. Um, you know, often, you know, two, you're providing two means of egress, which is a requirement of any development. Um, is there any, as far as circulation into the project, is the Bernard Street gate prioritized or is it two sort of equal, equally accessible gates? It, it's our, they're the same size gates, but it's our expectation that the vast majority of the traffic will come off Bernard because that's the, the major street, the thoroughfare doesn't. Coming from Pico from the west end is a very circuitous route. It, it doesn't go directly to Mount Vernon, uh, so you're really not going to get anybody coming from that side. So the only potential really people probably coming from Pico, Pico is if somebody were to want to pick up their child from school rather than having them walk home, that type of thing. Um, but otherwise, it's generally going to be more convenient to have them come on the Bernard entrance. And we do have 101 spaces, I just wanted to know yes. uh, on the properties. Thank you. Sure. Um, seeing no other commissioner questions, I will open up the opportunity for a uh, rebuttal <coughs> period. Uh, since we last heard from the opposition, I will invite up those in favor of the, co uh, of the proposal uh, for five minutes of rebuttal comments, if there are any. Otherwise, we'll move on to the opposition. Remember, this is a five-minute uh, total for all speakers, so please be succinct. Um, are, are there any uh, members of the audience wishing to speak rebuttal comments in favor of the project? Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I, I just, uh, the fact that there wasn't a traffic study done oh th are you in favor or Re opposed? rebuttal oh i'm sorry yeah. i thought this was a rebuttal and in, in Th this is a in okay. this is in favor uh we will have a rebuttal period right after okay. thank you so seeing no uh, no audience members wishing to speak in favor i will close the rebuttal period for the fa those in favor and open the rebuttal period for those in opposition okay. sir thank you thank you and please state your name one more time uh yes. bill b thank you yeah. you know i think since they didn't do a traffic study you know, I grew up in that, in that neighborhood my entire life, okay? Uh, it, it is going to cause a tremendous amount of traffic. There's no doubt that, that people are going to come through that opening. It's all 20, there, not only is there a ton of kids, 25 mile an hour speed limit, we've had kids killed there, okay, right there. They put in a stop sign, people blast through the stop sign. It's a steep hills going down from there down to East Bakersfield High. People fly down those roads. I guarantee you people are going to come out of those apartments flying down those roads, okay? They're going to go to EB. There's going to be all these kids that are going to go to East Bakersfield High that are going to live there, and they're going to go from there straight through our neighborhood, down through the, through, through the houses, and people are going to get hurt. And, and they didn't do a traffic study for it. And I, and I just can't believe that. And the, there is no access going to Mount Vernon. You either have to go all the way down to college through our neighborhood, or you got to go past the school. That's it. You can't get out any other way. Okay? It's a real mess. Right now, it's a mess. 
and there's not 81 apartments going in. Okay, after those 81 apartments going in, it's going to be a mess. And I can tell you, kids are going to get hurt. There is no sidewalk on Pico. The whole area that you saw that blue spot I kept talking about, that whole area along Pico on that side of the street has no walkway. So when the kids walk along that, you get a car coming, there's no sidewalk, it basically drops off into dirt, it's county. So it's just dirt, drops off kind of into a, a little bit of a ditch and then it goes up a big steep hill, okay? You know, cars coming out of there, there's no sidewalk, you got them flying up and down there. They're gonna park there on that side. There's, no, there's not no parking signs. So they're gonna park all along that with no sidewalk. So now the kids gotta walk, they gotta go around the cars, now they're really out in the street, okay? And walking down. You know, I, I just would hope uh, that you'd please really, commissioners, consider the danger there. Uh, I would say take a, take a look at the, the children that have been hurt. You know, I'm not making that up. You can look, look back in history and see what's happened there. Uh, and, you know, blocking off the path. They used to have that dirt walk, walkway. Kids used to be able to walk from Bernard up a little dirt path, okay, and walk down. At least they had something. Well, they blocked it off. Okay, and she told you about the kid getting caught with the skirt. All right, well, they blocked it off, and that whole thing filled up with homeless. I mean, there's trash slung from one side of that field to the next, out in the field, homeless camps. Okay, so that I like about the, about the apartment. But, but my point being is they block that off, the kids can't get through, okay, and you got little kids that are five, six years old, seven years old, having to walk on those big busy streets to get around and go way up, it's, it's dangerous. You know, someone grab them, abduct them, it's just dangerous. So, you know, please consider that. Uh, it is our neighborhood. It's a beautiful old neighborhood that's kind of, you know, kept its, its flavor and, and its charm. A lot of them have gone downhill in that area. And I uh, love that neighborhood. So I just thank you and, and uh, please consider those things. Thank you very much. Commissioner Rudnick, I appreciate your comments regarding the traffic. And if you do do a traffic study, I will hope you will do it during the school season because if you go up there tomorrow and school's out, you're not going to find any traffic problems. It's going to happen during school. All right. Are there in, we have uh, 30 seconds remaining. Any additional comments in opposition? Again, not in opposition to anything. I love to uh, watch Bakersfield grow. I'm approaching a decade as a citizen of this uh, awesome city, and I'm loving every minute of it. But um, someone mentioned something about a biological study having to be done with regards to the kit foxes, but wasn't that what stalled the project with the East Hills Mall? Just throwing that out there. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Closing. So we now um, ended the rebuttal period. Uh, just two quick clarifications that I have questions before we move on to comments. One is noticing exhibit two on the staff report, or figure two. Does the applicant intend to provide a sidewalk along Pico as part of this project? Yes. Okay, thank you. And then uh, I forgot my second question. So unless there are any other commissioner questions, uh, Commissioner Bell. And if I may, to you, Stephen, um, is there a possibility? Uh, I, I, I know that property really well. Uh, we're over there often. Can you do something to mitigate the through fare for these children to get from Bernard over uh, to Pico and to these, to these uh, schools? Is there a, I see that the setback is pretty substantial, but I think that it's, it's pretty hilly. Uh, what would that, that'd be on the west side? So on that west side, it, it, would there be a way of putting the block wall that is required between the school and the apartment and having maybe a chain link transition, five foot, six foot wide, 
uh, through FAIR where uh, you're not, I, I know you've had the benefit of using a, a bare piece of land and that's not exactly an answer either. So it, it, could we do the research on that? I think that would be a good neighbor and I know the city is gonna wanna be a good neighbor to this community. And I, those are the concerns I'm hearing more than anything is, you know, are you guys gonna be a bad neighbor? You're, sure. you're impacting us in a manner that, yeah. that uh, seems a little insurvivable. So certainly, you're talking about access to the Adventist school to the west? Either, either to the Adventist school or from, what I'm hearing is from Bernard all the way through to Pico, that right now, pardon me, children are using that as a, a way to walk from sure. where they live today uh, to another area. Did I get that wrong? Am I, I think that's correct. I think that's what your concerns were, Mr. Bean. So, so we will we'll have pedestrian gates at both ends that are usually adjacent to the, the drive approaches. And uh, we could certainly have those, you know, they're generally unlocked or open during daytime hours. So it would allow kids to go through the gate, walk through the complex, you know, on sidewalks and then exit the other end. We, we generally lock them at nighttime. That's for security reasons. But, yeah, the, generally the kids would be going through the daytime anyway. So. Thank you, Mr. Pelz. Sure. Thank you. Seeing no other commissioner questions. Uh, I will now close the public hearing and return to the commission for comment and action. Are there any commissioner comments, thoughts, opinions? We are, yeah, no, no, no pleasantries at all. Commissioner Rudnick. Uh, my, my issue again is that traffic on Pico and I, I can see your logic about folks going to Bernard the most of the time, but if you're going to be traveling south, you're not going to go to Bernard and then make a ride on Mount Vernon or whatever. You're going to go to Pico and go up that street and then make a right. Uh, so I think you are going to have folks that are going to be using that more often than you realize. And I think your parking is inadequate. I think another 10 spaces, even though, you know, maybe these folks ride the bus a lot, but, you know, they have people visit them, et cetera. And, you're 25% under the requirement. I, I would like to see an additional 10 spaces added to the project. You have plenty of land to do it, and I think that would be a benefit to this uh, to this project. Those are really my two concerns. Commissioner Coleman. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I, I want to address the hysteric of uh, the perception of low-income housing in this parcel. Uh, the Housing Authority of Kern County uh, is, is an award-winning agency and develops excellent projects. And uh, I'm not aware of a parking situation in any of your parking, any of your projects um, that, uh, that overflows uh, the complex itself. Uh, so in, in my in my view, the uh, project uh, for the Housing Authority of Kern is a very very good project. I, I would be uh, I, I don't think personally I don't think we need to change the parking requirements. Parking requirements are uh, built in the ordinance, and so they get a, a discount for the low income uh, portion. So I'm okay with that personally. Um, I, I would, I, I'm not exactly clear why kids are walking back and forth between Bernard and Pico through the parcel because the schools are on the Pico side where the housing is, so I'm not really clear on that. But I, I would, you know, if that was a hang up, I would entertain some kind of idea where they had some walking path through there. Uh, I would entertain that. But overall, I just want to say that I support uh, this project. Uh, especially because it's uh, going to be owned and managed by, well, he said earlier it's not entirely owned by the uh, Housing Authority of Kern, but it certainly is managed for the next 55 years by the Housing Authority of Kern, and so I'm a big supporter of this project. Thank you, Commissioner Coleman. Are there any other comments? Commissioner Lomas. Staff, can we ask that a traffic study be done? I'm, I'm sure we can, but I would also think a traffic study would have been done for the 2018 approval of this project initially. I just don't have 
the file with me to verify that. So if there wasn't one, if there was one, then we can use that one. If there wasn't, can we ask for one? I, I, I will look into that, yes. That's a yes, or I will look into that yes. So it's two different answers. Where does that leave us? <laughs> yeah, where does that leave us? I think it's I think a the, reasonable request. I think the short answer is yes, you can ask for one. The practical way would be we could continue it and look if we had one, or we would approve it. I don't know if you'd, we'd be able to show you in the future. It would be some sort of memo to the Planning Commission, but the only way we can do ask for a traffic study to impact this current one tonight would be to continue the item. You know. Okay, that's my preference. I'll wait for the rest of what the was your preference to see us tra to get a to be able to at least get one so that anything any any um, hardships are mitigated but if we can't do it tonight if we you see what I'm saying I think we should have traffic study I'm trying that's to the, I'm that's the most valid argument I heard tonight was traffic and I think it's a very good argument so if we have to continue then I vote for continuance and I, I, I do agree with Kevin that I believe, I'm trying to remember, that one was done for the original projects. Remember, this land is already entitled for this. Tonight is just a reconfiguration of the lots. So it's the, they could build it with the old plan today. Got it. And they have that entitlement, but they wanted to redesign it and show you guys this new plan. That's, that's really all tonight's action is for. It's not the entitlements or anything else. Can we just continue it to our next meeting? Yeah, to we, we, this? we still could, but I just wanted to clarify that what we're looking yeah. at today. Well, yeah, can I right. ask a clarifying question? Off of Commissioner Lewis? Will defer to so you. I remember this proposal, but it's been a year. So um, is it the same number of units that the housing authorities are proposing, 81? Is it the same ingress and egress? And I mean, I, I am very sympathetic to traffic and impacts, and uh, I think looking at the site, I mean, I'm inclined, now that I'm in comment mode, um, to see that, you know, that a development of an, of an apartment project is very consistent with how the rest of the street is developed. A lot of the parking issues or traffic issues sound like it's a neighborhood issue involving multiple schools and multiple intersections and not necessarily the addition of 81 apartment units. And so if, I mean, I think being considerate to all parties that if we had previously approved an 81 unit project with one access on Pico, one access on Bernard, with a traffic study that deemed that configuration acceptable, I mean, I would kind of, so is there any way to achieve that or obtain that or review that? I know we have a database on our website that goes back, I think, a year. If we want to take a quick break, we could try to do some research. Okay, great. Because I, I just think that it, um, yeah. And then I will just add, I will just add my two cents to the parking conversation. I think, um, you know, as a city, we establish rules, we establish standards, and I think the applicant's not asking to deviate from those standards. I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Coyle, but proximity to a bus line also entitles them to an additional 10% reduction. Is that based on transit? I don't know if you can double dip, but I think, you know, I think that they're not asking for anything outside of what we've considered as a city to be the standard. So I would be inclined to say that plus the history of the Housing Authority um, projects around town that I don't see a need to provide more. And to the topography of this site seems like you can't just add a, another parking bay without exceeding slope. So can we recess to see if the, I, well, yeah, I think we'll continue comments. If, if Mr. Coyle, are you in, in search of said traffic study? I am. Okay. Commissioner Loomis, are you, did I cut you off or are you finished? Okay, you're good. So to, I heard Commissioner Coleman's option, and I think that may be a good one. If we want to just go to the next item. Hmm stall this one while we're looking. That way we can, you know, keep, keep things rolling here. This is, this is a new protocol. Uh, Mr. Egger, is that, we're okay with doing that? Yeah, because this, the hearing is, is closed and we're, right now you haven't voted or done anything yet, so we have time to evaluate it. Okay. It's basically like a 
10 minute continuance if you want to look at it that way. So. Okay, uh, we will give staff time to research the history of the project while we move on to item 5i. So Mr. Coyle, please read your staff report. Right, also researching the 2018 traffic study. <laughs> Uh, Mr. I'm waiting for Mr. Coyle to provide his staff report on item 5i while he simultaneously searches for a 20, 2018 traffic study. Can I ask another question? Commissioner Rudnick. Yes. Thank you. Uh, this is a question for the gentleman, the developer. Uh, it was, it, the comment up here was that most of your projects have uh, less, less parking. Is that correct? What, how, what is parking like on most of the projects? Um, you're, you're correct. Actually, most of the developments that we have, um, we have some in downtown Bakersfield that have uh, half a space per because of their CC zoning, and then they get the reduction. Um, so it, we find that probably in this type of development where we have half of them are one-bedroom units, first of all, uh, roughly half the tenants, the residents, um, don't have a vehicle. That's why this is a perfect spot because the bus stop is literally right in front of the development. Right. Uh, so we'll have uh, sufficient parking, more than enough. Um, it's been our experience. Um, I, I, if you haven't found the traffic study yet, I believe it was done when the um, um, zone change happened uh, several years ago when they approved the R3 PUD, which was a zone change. Uh, if I remember correctly, so. So your feeling is it won't impact the neighborhood with the overflow parking? That's my main. No, and, and particularly on Pico because it it would be super in inconvenient to park outside the gates. On it, Pico, it would, I agree. It's not a close walk at all to the the residents. And okay. It, it, regarding access, I mean, we'd be fine with not having access on Pico, if that was okay with the fire department, and everybody else in terms of circulation. But I doubt that's the case. So. Yeah. Could, this is a question for staff. Uh, if if the developer would be okay without having Pico access, can you do like a emergency, emergency crash gate kind of a thing on Pico for, you know, fire department, ambulances, that kind of stuff? I believe that's an option, but we'd have to defer to the fire department for that exact answer. Well, like I say, I I've gone to school in that in that area, and I'm really pretty familiar with it. And during peak hours with that school, it's a mess. It is. And uh, to add, you know, 30, 40, 50 more cars, whatever it might be, uh, it's not a welcome thing. And I don't, again, I don't blame these folks that live in the neighborhood to, to not wanting more in there. Uh, and I, I agree, safety-wise, it's always great to have two access points to a large project. So it's a, it's a difficult situation. But if you could do some kind of a crash gate or whatever the proper terminology is off of PICO, I, I think I think that'd be a plus. And if I could speak just to clarify, we would still have pedestrian access. What I meant, just not having the vehicular access on Pico. So. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Lomas, I think the uh, Commissioner Rudnick, are you your comments complete? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Lomas. And. I don't know for certain, but I've seen enough of these come around, and they don't like not having two accesses. And you want to spread out your your traffic. My my concern, what I think could address your concerns, is if I'm a resident that lives in this, right here, in this in this subdivision or in this um, gated community, and I know that school's letting out, I'm going to use the other entrance. So a common sense is going to take them out to Bernard to avoid if it's such a heinous thing when school's going on, they're going to be using the other entrance. I, I don't want crash gates. I want people to get out if they need to get out. And I don't think fire is going to like it. That's just my opinion. Um, also, to the parking issue, half of the units are one bedrooms. How are you going to have two cars with one bedroom apartments? Typically, you're not. So anyway, I'm good with the way it is. I'd like to, I'd like to offer the neighborhood some assurances. I'm assured, because I know you guys and you do a really good job, and I know you've got all your bases covered, but when we, st we sit here and the neighborhood comes in and says, where's your traffic study? 
we should have it for them. So that's why I'm asking for one. I'm assured I'm good. I think the project's great the way it is, and I don't want to change a thing. But we should be able to answer this gentleman's question. So I looked online, and unfortunately, the online database only goes back to 2010. And I think Mr. Pels is correct that the traffic study was probably done with the original zone change in 2008. So I, I will not be able to find it tonight. So if you... I would like I'm trying to, to think of an in-between. There really isn't. And again, it's I'm fine. And I know the commissioners, I believe, are fine with, with it presented. But I'd like to offer some assurances to the neighborhood. So the gentleman, um, I wrote your name down. Um, I'd like I believe you, you to get yeah. his information and send it to him. We can do that. That'd be great. Uh, Mr. I, Shires. I'd like to see the traffic study before we vote, I think that would be a prudent thing for us to, to do. Can we do a one meeting continuance and, and provide this information to us? That will, that will be up to you guys. You guys can vote to continue it or you can approve the item tonight. Well, I think it's logical that we at least see the impact on the, on the traffic on that PICO side. So for clarity's sake, a traffic study will look at the impact of this development. It will not look at the cumulative result of all of the developments that are around that area. So just be aware of that. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think there's, on my, my personal take is that I think the traffic study for over an 81 unit project is not gonna affect the width of having you know, an access to a major arterial and a secondary access to a residential road that really only takes you to Oswell that really doesn't take you logically as a driver just trying to get home to Mount Vernon. I mean, I would be more inclined to say that I think what we're looking at tonight is a revised site plan for PUD that we've already approved. And um, I would nod the applicant, I think, providing the retention basin as a buffer between the apartments and the residential to the south, thus discouraging people from parking on Pico because it's quite a long distance to park on Pico and walk into the project. I think providing access by keeping your pedestrian gates unlocked is something that I think is a great community asset, not something I was expecting from the applicant. And so, I mean, I think given what we have, given the fact that I think as a city, sometimes we can be density averse, but 81 units is not, we're not adding you know, LA Live, we're not adding, you know, the Grand Towers to this neighborhood. Um, it's just my personal opinion. And so I would, can the chair make the motion? I know it's bad protocol, but I would be more on the side in for the other commissioners to say that I would feel confident moving forward with this project. But I will not make the motion. I'm curious everyone else's thought. And I guess we're not moving on to the next item unless we, we kind of kept going. So, are there any other commissioner comments? I'll do it quickly. Commissioner here. Bill. Yeah, I, because it is a revision of something that was approved a year ago, am I, is that about right? Yeah, I'm uh, starting to lean a little bit more toward moving forward and trusting our staff and the work that they always do to make sure things are, uh, are thorough. Uh, I would like to see Mr. Pell's address clearly uh, I, I'm very thankful that you would be uh, interested in leaving gates open and having some of that happen. I'm thinking in my own world, I, I know that area so well that um, <clears throat> I just can't imagine, even though uh, many of the uh, neighborhood folks are saying that they're going to come out on Pico, just don't think they're going to do that during a school day. They might do it on a Saturday, might do it on an evening. Uh, that would just be almost a foolish way of, of, uh, of trying to exit that property. So I think, practically speaking, um, uh, if you're willing to be, if you're willing to be uh, open to addressing uh, the through uh, the children pathway and some things of that nature, I, I'd like to proceed tonight. Commissioner Wade, I like this project, and. I would be prepared to vote yes for it. Uh, however, the fact that we don't have the traffic study is bad form, I think. Um, now, 
it could be implied that this was only approved in the first place because there was a traffic study done. But for us to not have it, the, the day that it comes up for the public to, to see, and you know, uh, it would have been helpful if we were dealing with this earlier when, you know, in, in years past, and we could have answered these questions. But we should have this available for people to see, for us to reference. Um, I'm kind of torn here. I, th I think I'm, uh, I am leaning, though, towards we, we should have a, tra a traffic study to show to people that, look, it was done. Even if we're sure that one exists and it's sufficient, otherwise we wouldn't have gotten this far with it, uh, I think it's bad form. Thank you, Commissioner Wade. Any other commissioner comments? Commissioner Rudnick. I'd like to make a motion that we postpone this until they find the traffic study and, and we can look at it and alleviate any concern we have. And uh, that would be my motion. All right. Motion by Commissioner Rudnick. Do we have a second? Commissioner Lomas. I'll second. Commissioners, cast your vote. Commissioner Cater voted against. Commissioner Coleman voted against. Commissioner Bell abstained. Commissioner Bowers, Lomas, Rudnick, and Wade voted for. Okay, so the item is continued to the next meeting. Moving on to item 5I. Are we ready for the last project? <clears throat> I don't know, maybe I we should take a 20 minute break. No, I'm just kidding. Let's do one more. <laughs> project 5I is an extension of time for planned commercial development 19 0206. This is a request for a one year extension of time for a previously approved planned development that allowed a 59-bed skilled nursing facility on an undeveloped 5.59-acre parcel in the PCD district located at 3450 Bernard Street, just southeast of East Hills Mall. On August 17, 2016, City Council approved a general plan amendment and zone change which included approving the site development plan for the skilled nursing facility. When the PCD zone is assigned as an exclusive zone, the applicant shall commence construction no later than three years from the effective date of the zoning change. If within such period construction has not been commenced, your commission is to be notified and shall consider whether change circumstances justify a zone change to rescind the PCD zone, or if additional time is necessary to be conditioned in order to commence construction of the project. The applicant indicated that they intend to commence construction in the near future, but likely unable to commence prior to the three-year period, which in this case is August 17, 2019. 
Therefore, they are requesting the extension of time in an effort to not lose their entitlement. The applicant submitted the request for the extension of time in a timely manner. Based on the approved project and no additional changes, staff recommends your commission approve the resolution and suggested findings approving a one-year extension of time subject to the original listed mitigation measures and conditions of approval. This concludes our staff report. Thank you, Mr. Coyle. The public hearing on this item is open. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the project? Please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Seeing uh, no one wishing to speak in favor, is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the project? Please step to the, step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Commissioner, my name is Jack Stewart. I'm the minister of the East Bakersfield Church of Christ. And uh, our property is adjacent to the east side of this development. And uh, the, at the uh, previous approval in 2016, uh, we asked for them not to be given a deviation on the six-foot block wall. Uh, we did discuss with them afterwards the possibility of putting in a solid wall of some kind. We just do not want chain link. Uh, chain link is not a deterrent to hardly anybody. Uh, the area, as most of Bakersfield, is having problems with homeless individuals wandering around and crossing the property, cutting through the fences, uh, setting up encampments, and uh, really would like to see the six-foot block wall, them not given a deviation on that, or to specify it is to be a solid wall, not a chain link fence. Good neighbors make good fences, or good fences make good neighbors. <laughs> so that's, that's the only comment that I have with regard to it. Not, a, not opposed to the extension. We look forward to the development, uh, to that area being made useful. And, uh, but it just, we, we want to protect ourselves and them in the, in the block wall fence. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Coyle, can you clarify? Yes, please. Uh, if uh, you look at page three of the staff report, and I apologize for reading, but for those who don't have access to that staff report, at the June 2nd, 2016 Planning Commission meeting, no agencies were present that opposed the request. However, the pastor of the church to the east of the site opposed the removal of the required six-foot block wall. Upon deliberation, your commission recommended that a condition be placed on the project to require a six-foot high, solid, non-transparent wall along the east property line. The pastor and applicant agreed with the added condition, end quote. I feel like you're reading from the present. Uh, yeah, sounds are, yes. All right, well, I think that's about as clear as uh, capable. Yeah, that's about as clear. I didn't have that information. So. Okay, well, thank you for uh, thank you, Pastor. returning to the Planning Commission and providing. All right. Uh, thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing uh, no one. I will extend commissioner questions, but I think I'd also say that I'm inclined to close and go to public hearing. All right. Yes, that's why I'm going to close the public hearing and return to commission. Mr. Rudnick, is that from before? Uh, okay, I think I have you from the last one. Uh, I will close the public hearing and move on, return to commission for comments and action. I'll make the motion to approve. Commissioner Lomas. I'll second it. Here I go. Uh, everyone seconded, but we'll call Mr. Commissioner Bell as a second. Commissioners, cast your votes. Was that a dig? I mean, I don't know if that, yeah, is it too late? Yeah. Can we all abstain except uh, Commissioner Lomas? All right.
just stop turning around? That guy, like, <laughs> fake out. Motion passes. Motion passes. The audience rejoices. Um, this concludes the public hearing portion of the agenda, and we move on to communications. Mr. Coyle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll keep this brief. The next meeting is two weeks from tonight, June 20th, 5.30, here in Council Chambers. Thank you. Thank you. Any... Uh, Loopy commissioner comments as we make our way into our third hour of all being together. Commissioner Bell, is that a comment or am I just, okay. All right, then I will adjourn the meeting at 8.19. Commissioner Wade is halfway to his car already.